The ultimate fishing experience is brought to you by Lund Boats. This week on the ultimate fishing experience, we're off to the legendary Nipigon River in Northwest Ontario, home of the world record brook trout. For anglers in search of a trophy brookie, known regionally as a speckled trout, there are few places like Nipigon Lake or the river that flows from it. It's a drive to destination with the potential for a fish of a lifetime and much more. The Nipigon River flows into Lake Superior where migratory fish like king salmon, steelhead and walleye make seasonal runs. Hit it right and rods may be bent all day long. This fish is very aggressive, it hit that fluke as soon as it hit the water, just nailed it. Few know these waters better than outdoor writer, guide and historian Gord Ellis. Along with longtime friend George Clark, they show us what the legendary Nipigon has to offer. Another good day on the Nipigon. Some nice Nipigon gold. So it's time to dig out those jigs, race up to the honey hole, and yeah. set some hooks. For on the famed Nipigon River, you may not know what's right, tugging on your line, just that it's big. The cool thing about the Nipigon River is that all of these other species, and you got this beautiful Chinook to sort of top our trip off. Okay, so the plan of attack for this afternoon is that we're gonna go up to the upper part of the Nipigon River and fish for brook trout. Uh, George is coming tomorrow. We'll probably fish the lower river tomorrow, but uh, we're gonna go look around in some of the current and see if we can catch some specks. I mean, the world record was caught in 1915, and in those days, there, there really wasn't dams on the river. It was a wild river. It had already been fished by anglers for like 50 years at that point. But what happened after that was a series of dams were built. Most of what was historically the, the rapids, the brook trout waters were, were uh, flooded. So you had less habitat for the brook trout, you had more anglers, and they were keeping a lot of fish. I think it was like five fish any size. So when I started fishing this river and the system in the uh, early 80s, it was very poor, very poor brook trout fishing. And you know, if you got like a 13, 14 incher, it was a big deal. So now the regulation, which has been in place for about a decade, is uh, one fish over 22 inches. And so that protects the brook trout basically through three spawning cycles. And so by the time they're 22 inches, they may live a year or two more. They don't live very long. So that's protected about 80% of the fish, 85%, and it's made a humongous difference in the fishing. It's, uh, it's really amazing tend to gravitate towards the current areas and there is current throughout the lake but as you get down to the, the southern portion of the lake where it empties into the Nipigon River you get current breaks and that's what I tend to fish. I like to fish current fish and those fish set up on uh, uh, blow throughs, uh, island points, things like that and they're very predictable spots. The fish are on them year after year. They, they will move around and sometimes there's no fish where you think there would be fish but if you keep checking different uh, current areas, sooner or later you generally find them. There we go. Got him. Look at that. <laughs> That's why you come to Nipigon, right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. And I threw up right on top of it with a 
with a very buggy looking uh, jig, Mighty Mitch Jungle Joe jig fly. And uh, he ate it. He was right on top of the rock. You can see it in there. And it'll be easy to get out because it's uh, barbless, but that's just a gorgeous, significant brook trout. There he goes. Okay, well, why don't I show you what uh, I use for these significant brook trout? I basically use a half dozen lures most of the time, or types of lures. Different hair jigs or bucktail jigs. Very buggy looking, almost like a sculpin type bucktail uh, jig. And then uh, it's just a fluke or any kind of uh, plastic minnow on, on a bullet head. I use a lot of crankbaits as well. The hus silver husky jerk again, because it looks a lot like a smelt, uh, works fantastic. And you can see that there's two hooks off here because up on Lake Nipigon, it's single barbless, so you can use a treble, but it has to be barbless. And then a very classic lure is this spoon. Now this one is actually called a Nipigon spoon. It's made by Williams. Uh, excellent uh, hammered brass and silver finish. Uh, they just club this thing, yeah, great lure. So those are my basic lures. You can use other things like spinners, um, but these are what I use most of the time. Really close to the boat here. And he uh, hit it once and then smoked it again. He's coming up there. Oh, no. baby. Beauty. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, look at that thing. Wow. Holy crap, that's a heavy fish. Whoa. <laughs> Wow, look at that beautiful fish. Full spawning colors, a male. They'll be spawning in about a month from now, but they're already taking on their uh, spawning colors. Fish of a lifetime for, for just about anybody. Let's put her back. Tomorrow we're gonna fish the Lower River with my buddy George, and hopefully we'll get some of these guys, and maybe some salmon, and who knows what else. Close captioning brought to you by Mercury Marine. Number one on the water. Well, we've uh, switched gears today. We're uh, on the lower river, the Nipigon River, and we're going to try for a few different species today. My buddy George Clark has uh, shown up. Uh, he's going to be our ringer today, so we're hoping maybe we'll look into a salmon. There'll be some brook trout around, hopefully. I've heard there's lake trout in the river as well. So we're going to put in and see what happens. So we're here at uh, just below Alexander's Dam on the lower river of the Nepigan, and we just did a run. It's about 14 miles from where it goes, where the Nepigan goes into Lake Superior to the first dam, which stops all migratory fish coming out of Lake Superior, and you never know what you'll catch on the lower Nepigan River. I don't know what it is. We hit, ate the, ate the jig on the drop. You never know what you can catch in this, uh, this part of the lake. Part of the river. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb here and say lake trout. So do you want to grab? Oh, yeah, I'll grab it. Fighting good, Gordon. Yeah, it's fighting good. Oh, walleye! Here, Gordon, hold on. Walleye! Look at that guy. Yeah, baby. They're native fish to the Nipigon system. They're re rehabilitating them right now, so. Uh, there's no, uh, you can't keep any, there's no possession. Very nice fish. There it goes. Yeah, I just had uh, switched up. I was fishing uh, crankbait earlier and I decided to try a fluke, which is uh, it's a good lure here on the river. It looks uh, a lot like a smelt. And uh, the fish eat, all the fish eat smelt in the uh, Nipigon system. So just on a plain head. Anything that eats a minnow will eat a fluke, and I just threw it in there, and that fish hit it on the drop. I felt him pick it up and got him. That was a decent fish, Gord. Yeah. Nice not, walleye. Not bad. It's good to see lots of walleye coming back. Yeah, they are. They are coming back. Now, the gear that I use most of the time when I'm casting on the Nipigon is uh, a nine foot spinning rod, uh, medium action. And I'm using braid, this is a 20 pound braid. You can use monofilament too, and I do like to use monofilament, but I, I feel like I get, especially jig fishing, I have a really good hook set with braid. And then I have about 18 inches of leader, and in this particular case, I'm using 12 pound test monofilament. You can use fluorocarbon too, leader. And it's very heavy, but it doesn't seem to make any difference to the number of hits you get. 
and you get your snags out more and you also land more fish. You don't break very many off. And I, I've attached it with a small swivel. You can use a, a blood knot or whatever, but I, I feel a little more confident when I have actually a, a metal little ant swivel or barrel swivel on there. I'm using a fluke here right now. You can use hair jigs as well. Uh, you can use a spoon. And we're just, uh, what we're doing right now, we're just swimming these flukes in this back eddy. There he is. In the honey hole there, Got the stroke going now. No turning back now. That is the crazy thing about this river is you just never know what you're going to get. This is a big fish. Or it's really being goofy. There's another walleye. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a cow. That is a cow. Serious, serious big fish. Yeah. Look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> wow, look at that. That is insane. <laughs> Goodness. Now that is a gorgeous wall. Look at that thing. We're going to put this guy back in so we can make babies. Make more significant river walleye. Wow, that is the crazy thing about this river. It just really don't know what you're going to get. You can get trophy pike, huge walleye, lakers, steelhead, salmon, brook trout, all in the same spot. Unbelievable. Fish. Is this just a fluke? I don't know what the heck this is. I just literally just threw that fluke straight back and it never even got three feet down. It's staying down a bit on you. Yeah, it's dogging. I mean, it's if it's a walleye, it's a heavy one, but it's acting really strange. And stars. Salmon. Yeah. You got another judge? There it is. Keep it in the net, GC. <laughs> GC, that's a net fail. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm sliding this forward. Oh, that's a net fail, buddy. I didn't have my gallons there, buddy. Yay! That's how we do it. Oh, and it just pulled out. Yeah, baby. Nice. Nice snook there, Gordon. Yeah. Right on. I'm gonna try to get us out of the boat busters. Yeah, that was that thing just clubbed it on the way down so hard. And I didn't think it was a walleye because it was just pulling really, really strongly. Okay, so this is a, a, a very average but very nice Lake Superior salmon in the Nipigon River. Um, they come up to spawn, but they stage here and they'll be hanging out here for a, a few days. And most of them spawn in September. This fish was very aggressive. It hit that fluke as soon as it hit the water, just nailed it. Fantastic fight. They're excellent eating. Uh, there's no problem keeping these fish. They're, uh, they're uh, native. Well, they're not native. They were stocked in the 50s, but they're naturalized. There's lots of them. They only live for four years. They spawn and they die. Uh, so uh, we're going to keep this guy. We're going to eat him and uh, we're going to go back to fishing. So when I'm fishing, uh, whether it's a fluke or a, j or a bucktail jig or a spoon or even a crankbait, I don't give it a lot of action generally. Um, for starters, you're in current. So there's a fish. So you're in current and, uh, oh, I think this is, oh, it's off. Crap. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 
You're in current, so your uh, jig or your spoon, whatever, is already has action in that current. And then, uh, so you don't really have to jig it. You just kind of follow with your rod tip. And what I do is I, I basically swim whatever lure it is and just let the current carry it. And so what I'm thinking is that that looks like a bait fish, a smelt going through the water column. And every once in a while, I'll just give it a lift just to give it a little bit of movement, but not a lot. And I think a lot of people do jig too much and give, uh, give their lure a little bit too much action. Feel good, GC? Feels good, I don't know what it is, I guess. Oh yeah. Line peeler. Big walleye. That's a chunk. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, wow. Looks good, buddy. Oh, put that guy back. See ya. All right, George, good job. So I uh, started with a Lund Pro V about 15 years ago. Beautiful 18-foot uh, tiller, loved that boat. And uh, fished with tillers for several years. Then moved to some other models, Lund models. And for the last four years, I've been running the uh, Pro V uh, I'll walk through with a windshield. And it's a fabulous boat. I mean, I do multi-species fishing. I fish for pike and I fish for muskie, lake trout. And here on the Nipigon, we're fishing for all sorts of salmonids. And it works great for all of it. A lot of times you end up using different rods, you know, bait casters, spinning, trolling rods. And the Pro-V has the rod locker, which is amazing, and then rod locker storage in the side. Um, the other thing about the Pro-V, tons of storage for tackle. It's got a fantastic uh, casting deck at the front and the back. You know, two live wells. It's just a, it's a fantastic boat. And as far as a fishing boat, it is the ultimate fishing machine, as far as I'm concerned. And the amazing thing about the Vrado is, I mean, besides the power of it and the, the bottom end, the, the torque, you know, it gets you out of the hole so fast. It is one of the quietest motors that uh, I've ever run for its horsepower. It's, it's not even close to anything else. But uh, anyway, it's working great here in the Nipigon River in this big current. And we're just going to keep grinding here and try to get a salmon. There's one. Buddy. You see you're on fire, baby. On fire. Okay, we're in spot lock. I'm didn't coming hit like back. The last one. I'm coming back. Yeah, it didn't quite hit like the last one. Well, it could be another species. It's staying down too. Could so be a, could be a walleye. Or northern. Uh, yeah. Mr. Walleye. Yep. Mr. Walleye, there he is. Eating up the fluke. Nice. Nice fish. Good job, buddy. Thank you. All right, good job. Another piece of gold from the Nipigon River. Golden beauties. Back to be caught another time. Thanks, Gort. You think you got a salmon on there, GC? I don't. We'll know quickly here. No, some gold. Yeah, no, it's a walleye. Significant gold. I just got to flip this guy off here. Nice one. Another good day on the Nipigon. Some nice Nipigon gold. Nice walleye. Nice chunky. 
very lively. It's ready to go back and live another day. One of the uh, cool things about uh, fishing when you're using, we have an eye pilot here, um, is you can spot lock. And so we're in the current, and there's a pretty good, uh, pretty good current here in this back eddy. And so there's a couple things you can do. One is when we're, we're fishing, we can just fan cast using it and we'll hold right in the current. The other thing is if I'm moving around, which I sometimes do, and uh, one of us hooks a fish, you can just hit the, uh, the spot lock, we're locked in, and then we can fight the fish and anchor it. It's a great safety feature because you don't want uh, to get sucked into the boat busters here. You don't want to get sucked down to rapids. Uh, so it's a fantastic option to have in your boat um, if you have an eye pilot. There's one. Got him? Yeah, I got him. Oh boy. Fighting like a salmon. Okay, GC, I'll come up there. What do we got there, bud? Strong fish. Yeah, I bet it's a it's salmon. Pulling good. Yeah. They come right up to the surface fast. <laughs> Boy. Oh, that's it, right good there. Man, good man, good man, look at that one. Nice uh, salmon, George, good one. Yeah, it was a nice catch. Right? Yeah. There's a good fight there. A little bit of current on a fluke. Well, you know what, we've had a great trip. Uh, we've caught a whole bunch of different types of fish. And the, the cool thing about the Nipigon River is that not only is it world famous for its brook trout, but when you're below the uh, dam, uh, you have salmon and rainbows and all of these other species and you got this beautiful Chinook uh, just to sort of top our trip off. Hey, if you're looking for a place to stay in Nipigon, Quebec Lodge in Red Rock, it's probably the nicest. It's historic. It's a true log cabin and uh, fantastic access to the river and the lake. Great food and a wonderful place to stay. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.